Uh, my name is Brady Sammons, and uh, I, uh, this is my first attempt at Robert Ledger's uh, Espresso uh, challenges. Uh, I've been following him here for a little bit, and uh, I decided I'd try this one. Um, and uh, yeah, I was able to figure something out. So um, what I ended up doing here was I wanted to kind of recreate the uh, Xbox title bump, um, which actually, randomly enough, does kind of have a uh, star, as you can see here, swooping in behind. Um, so that out of the way let me uh, show you what uh, what I did here to get the uh, the spline to work um, so in the spline control here I have all my user data down here um, and uh, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna switch cameras uh, and we can get rid of these keyframes and uh, so here we go we have um, our input here fields here um, for the star which is right here and obviously if we want to switch that out um, I can get a profile in here go back to my uh, spline here and drop the profile to replace the star and uh, there we go we got our profile down there um, I'm gonna go back to the star um, size start right here we got the size end we got the growth we got the uh, twirl right here And we got the fillet. And last but not least, we have our color pickers here. So we can change the colors of the caps, we could change the colors of the rounding, and we can change the colors of the main body. Um, so let me pop open the espresso here and show you what I did. Um, so for the most part, it was actually pretty straightforward. Um, the only thing that took a little thinking was how to get the spline to um, scale both the start and the end because by default um, you can only control the end scale as denoted right here. Um, so what I did was, and I'm not sure if this is the way it was supposed to be done, is I actually used Expresso to control this parameter in here which is the scale um, and it's a linear correlation between the start and the end. Um, so in my Expresso here, these two guys right here um, scale Y with the 1, which means scale point 1 in the Y direction, scale point 2 in the Y direction, so this is your start and your end. Um, up here, you know, this is what Robert had showed before using your uh, reference, or I'm sorry, your instance objects, um, so that you can then access the reference object in here um, and swap out your, um, you know, your profiles. Um, and then down here, the twirl. Um, the range mapper here was used to convert, I believe, um, real numbers to degrees because twirl is in degrees. Um, fill a cap right here. Um, and then we've got our colors. Uh, I actually am using luminance also, so I had the color controlling the luminance as well. Um, but um, these guys, I actually ended up having to physically drag the um, shaders into the espresso and um, also have them on the sweet nerves um, and that was that just uh, wanted to show you here what the uh, the final animation looked like um, so here we go and uh, sorry about that it kind of slowed down at the end there I think I rendered this out um, using uh, the wrong codec. But anyways, you get the idea. Um, added a couple things here in After Effects, um, and there actually is sound on the final version as well. But, uh, you know, pretty simple. Um, but uh, it was a really fun tutorial, and uh, I'm definitely looking forward to some more from Robert. Um, I actually, you know, have been learning a lot of stuff about Espresso, and I feel that it can really enhance your productivity and your workflow, especially when you're working in a motion graphics environment and you have to reopen projects and reuse elements. Um, using Expresso um, can, uh, can, can really make those files um, a lot easier to get into and make alterations to after you've used them, you know, four and five times. So, all right, take care.